Yeah, you can enter. I'll disconnect this call. All right. Bye-bye. Oh, so do I just start off now? Hello, hello. How do I know that somebody over, is over there? I shall assume that there are people over here. There seem to be nine people over here. And uh, hi guys, my name is Suraj Mani. It is six o'clock and I'm on Songdu's uh, Media's YouTube channel and we're doing a live stream today. These are COVID times and uh, in COVID times you do videos which you can share with people because you can't meet them anymore. Um, what's interesting about this gig is that uh, I've been doing a couple of gigs, but this is the first workshop that I'm going to be doing. And um, the general rules that I understand are going to happen uh, are that I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, songwriting. I mean, and that's the topic that we're, I'm talking about. And uh, I'll try to make this as interactive as possible. So you guys should shoot your mails or messages and because I'm looking at the screen, sometimes I might miss the messages, but what the sound uh, media, sound, Songdu, uh, my friends from Songdu are going to do is that they're going to very kindly forward me the messages on my WhatsApp message uh, and I will be able to read and answer things. So let's make this as interactive as possible. Uh, in the um, So uh, broad guidelines is that I'm going to talk about songwriting. Uh, my name is Suraj Mani, for those of you who uh, some of you will know me as uh, the ex-frontman of Mother Jane because I was with them for about 10 years. We did two albums with them. And uh, some of you will know me as the host of a journey called the Tatwa Trip, uh, which is what I call my journey now. It's part conversation. It's part uh, uh, concert. And uh, I write a lot of songs. So <laughs> uh, it's something that I've, I started doing late in life and something that I just fell in love with. And what I want to actually tell you right off the bat is that uh, if I can write songs, you can write songs too, because I never read poetry in school. I never liked poetry, really. Uh, I never listened to lyrics of songs. I was somebody who would actually listen to songs just for the music of it and uh, never knew uh, the words of most of the songs. Uh, still the same problem I have. Uh, and yet, when I had to start writing music, I, I learned how to write songs. So you can learn how to write uh, songs and how to compose music. I don't have any training in uh, music. I don't have music uh, theory knowledge. I wasn't a guitarist until five years, uh, seven years back. I picked up playing the guitar. What I'm basically telling you guys is that if I can do it, you can do it. And uh, uh, the simplest thing to do is... Uh, um, the simplest thing to do is I will, songwriting is a huge thing. And uh, so um, I can't cover most of the topics that I'd like to cover, but I will pick a few of them at least and do that. And before anything else, I think just to uh, make this in, make this fun, I'm going to sing a, one song for you guys. I'm quite sure you're not going to be able to see my guitar, but uh, the interesting thing about this song is that it has a story behind it and it's got relevance to you guys. Uh, the thing is, I learned how to play the guitar seven years back and I, I learned how to play the guitar by just uh, uh, as a tool to write songs, right? I didn't have musical theory. I had zero technical knowledge and stuff like that. But somehow it just helped me write lots of songs and I'd written some 20 to 30 odd songs. Um, and then one day I came across this uh, video by a guy called Tommy Emmanuel. Now he's one of the best singer, uh, best finger style guitarists in the world. And I was so inspired that I immediately started learning and practicing and learning and practicing. And uh, two months into that, one day I woke up and I realized that for two months I had not written a single new song. And what I'm trying to tell you guys is that when we learn from the masters, we should not try and learn their techniques. Uh, we should not try and paint what they painted. Yeah, we should not draw what they drew. What we should learn is to feel what they felt and to see what they saw and to actually capture your own essence of that whole thing and bring it out. That is... Uh,
why you know uh, it is important to find your own voice and uh, um i actually i remember writing this song i said i have to write a song to just make me remem- remember this particular thing and i remember the words that say that a dog that find that finds his master's feet is close and yet still someone else so this up the finger it's the moon I lost my way when I sought your street and then one fine day I saw myself a dog blinded by his master's feet is close and yet still someone else in love in spite enough to bend the true to the stop then to the end remember true masters point out soon it's not the finger it's the moon i lost my way when i saw your street and then one fine day i saw myself a dog blinded by his master's feet is close and yet still someone else in love and spy enough to bear him Truer to the start than to the end. Remember, true masters, point out soon. It's not the finger, it's the moon. Great beauty is laid to waste. Run in front of wicked ties when minds obsess with taste where a fairness will suffice I lost my way when I sought your street and then one fun day I saw myself a dog blinded by his master's feet is close and yet still someone else in love and spite enough to bend true to the start then to the end remember true masters point out so it's not the finger it's the moon not what witness but what gloom <laughs> All right, guys. Remember, the finger that points to the moon is not the moon itself. So, though you can go to other people for inspiration, finally you'll have to make your own journey. And uh, um, yeah, so uh, let's talk first of all about inspiration. Where to find it and uh, how to capture it. Uh, you find inspiration in life. Everywhere you look around you, you can find. uh inspiration and what we really need to do to capture inspiration is to understand one very simple thing why we write we are writing to capture an emotion we are writing to make sense of an emotion we are writing to make sense of a situation and basically we can get our inspiration by just handling these three things i once remember seeing a uh, 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 something by some uh, singer songwriter who was giving a class and he said that you know most uh, singer songwriters are people who deal with their problems in in songs he says and the, the good thing for all you guys who are logged in right now is to know that uh, uh uh most people when they have problems they have to pay a psychologist to handle it but if you're a singer songwriter you can write a song and people will pay you to actually listen to your problems <laughs> so uh it's a privileged uh, place to be in and uh, just to come back to the thought of inspiration pick something pick an emotion and here is one important rule that i believe in i'm going to tell you the things that i believe in and uh, you know you can use them as you will 
the one important thing that I believe in about an emotion and a song is that one song is one emotion. If you have two emotions, those are two songs. If you have two little ideas, those are two songs. There's no need to try and actually meld them together. In fact, what will happen typically with a lot of people who are writing songs is that you will have a little, ni little nice, little beautiful melody and somebody else in the band has another nice little melody and they both sound fine and then you mix them together. And somehow, though it makes sense musically, it just does not make sense as a song. And I think the reason for that is that maybe one of you was talking about, uh, you know, something beautiful that you saw and somebody else was talking about something really sad that they saw. So the point that I'm making is that capture one emotion and make one emotion one song. Make one topic one song. As a band, if you're writing together, my advice is that whoever's written the song or whatever it is should just tell the rest of the guys that see this is what I'm talking about and I want you guys to also talk about the same thing. So if we're talking about a phone, I'll say that this is a phone as far as I can see it's an iPhone, it's black etc etc. Now you also talk. Now you will actually look at this and probably you might say that you know this is something that brings families together and a third person might say that without something like this during a time like COVID we would have all gone mad. So it's different perspectives but it all meets on the same topic. And that is how you actually write a song when you're doing a collaborative effort, right? Uh, if you guys want to, uh, I will go into other points, but if you guys want to ask any questions, this would be the perfect time to do so. I actually have my, um, where it is? Yeah, I have my, Live sessions questions. Yes. Is there so is there any difference between writing poetry and writing a song? Um, yeah, the, that, that, that's a that's a great question. <laughs> See, songwriting does not really mean that you're writing uh, poet, uh, the lyrics alone, but uh, obviously it's great to be able to write the lyrics and uh, the put a melody to the whole thing. Uh, and it starts in different ways for different people. Some people will put a melody first and then find a lyric to suit that. Uh, famously, Metallica, I know that uh, Hetfield will, you know, put all his riffs together, sing some melody, and he will basically grunt out certain vowels. And somehow he will say, okay, these vowels sound like these words. So you can come from any direction. I personally like uh, writing a lyric first and then putting a melody to it from there. And it can happen from every direction. Uh, that is one thing that you have to allow yourself to, uh, to, to, to see that it's a possibility. Some people will write music first. Some people will write lyrics first. Uh, there is uh, poetry and writing a song is not necessarily the same thing. Obviously, I think most lyricists will be happy if, you, if somebody tells them that uh, you're a poet, man. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I hope I've answered that question. Uh, somebody was asking me if I got the same guitar as Tommy Emmanuel. Yes, yeah, but that's not a question about songwriting. What if the emotion evolves as the song is written? MB asks. What if the emotion evolves as the song is written? Interesting question. I have, uh, there are times when I will write about an idea and and while I'm doing it, I'm not feeling it enough. So I will psych myself into getting emotionally involved with that idea. I will, you know, if I'm writing a song about something that is sad, I will get into a sad space because somehow it is from that space that you get the right words. You know, every word has an energy about it, everything. Here's one very important thing that you need to know. Uh, you have to write and compose to express. You should not write to impress yeah so you should feel something and it is from those emotions that you will get your your this thing because sometimes you can write cerebral stuff but you will never move people see the thing about audiences and people everywhere is your audience does not know if you know how to do music yourself they don't know music they don't know whether you know music sometimes they do but most of it uh, but what they are all experts in are human emotions and so they will know when you're really genuinely feeling an emotion or not. And that is what they connect with. Because though your circumstance and your situation may be different, maybe one particular thing made you sad, 
and maybe they've never faced that thing in their life, but they do know what feeling sad is about. And so when you sing and when you come from your emotions, when emotion, you can put people, you can make people move if you actually target their emotions. And you cannot take them to a place that you haven't gone yourself. So it's very, very important that you feel it first. And when you feel it, the words will come from there. The melodies will come from there. Um, I think, would you get into a technical aspect? Do you follow intro, chorus, verse format? OK, let, let me tell you. Uh, let me tell you something that I came across. I came across it in a movie, and I used it, and it's worked with wonders for me. And uh, it, it is about how to write freely. Right? So you think of a topic, and the first thing that you have, you have to feel a little bit about that to particular topic. Like I said, one song, one topic. Take it and just write. Do not polish. Do not attempt to polish. Do not attempt to rhyme. Do not attempt to do anything like that. Just write everything you feel about that particular topic. Finish it, and then look at it and start saying, okay, let me now polish it. What can happen to people, and I say this because it happened to me, was that I would first write one line, write the second line, and then when I was writing the third line, I would look up and then I'd say, oh, no, the second line does not look too good. So what I'm trying to say is that you should not be editing when you're first writing. First, just write. You should just write, put, pour out your emotions, edit later. Your brain should come in later. Your heart should come in with full force in the beginning. It, come, think of it like making a, a chair. You actually will do the carpentry work first, and then you will do the polishing and buffing and stuff like that. When you start to edit too much, you are starting right ahead with the, <laughs> the polishing without even making the furniture. So it's very important to first feel, capture everything that you felt, and then start editing on that process. Then you can look at meter, you can look at, you know, instead of five words, if you can put in one word, great. And if you have one word, which is better than the other word, those are just choices that you make. And here's another great tip that you should know. Uh, I'm telling you stuff that I apply, okay? Uh, I have a favorite quote, which says that creativity is about allowing yourselves to make mistakes. And art is knowing which ones to keep. I shall repeat that. Creativity is about allowing yourselves to make mistakes. And art is knowing which ones to keep. So guys, when you want to, this is the thing. You give yourself permissions to make mistakes. And that is what I said. When you just feel and you just write without thinking about it, stuff pours out. And then art becomes, okay, out of this, what do I keep? Which do I edit? What do I let go? And stuff like that. And um, in case you face something called writer's block, uh, there is another exercise that I'd like to give you. Um, it is something um, called morning pages. It basically is just to clear your mind. If you're stuck and if ideas are not coming, just get up every day in the morning, take three full scrap papers, full scrap pages, and just write anything that pops into your mind. You're not trying to make it smart. You're not trying to make it uh, legible, tangible, etc. You're just writing everything. You could just be saying that I really don't know why I'm writing all these things. You know, I'm supposedly going to learn something out of this. Just write, 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 write. What it does, it basically clears your head. It empties your head. And when you are, when your head is empty, when you don't have preconditions, when you start seeing life as it is in front of you, without filters, then you actually see life with, you know, you're dealing with life with present information. And when you're dealing with the present, you always come up with something beautiful. So try your morning pages if you are getting stuck, maybe because you just have too much stuff in your head. It's just a good exercise to get up in the morning, write three pages of it. You don't even need to refer to those things again. You can store them and keep them aside. But try that. This is something that I feel is a good thing to do. I will get into some more questions. Um, how long does it take you to write a song? Also, if you don't mind any particular genre you're in. Well, the truth be told is that I can write a song 
I've written most of my songs in less than less than an, the initial draft comes in less than an hour, sometimes less than 10, 20 minutes, because I am not looking to polish it in. And then I will obsess and polish it over the next three or four days. But yeah, I can, I can write in less than an hour. And I aim to do that. Just, just jump in and write whatever you want to do. And like I said, you polish later. Uh, how to choose between what sells and what you love. That is, Jay is asking something which is very important. And I will tell you something that I tell most young musicians who I meet and who ask for advice. I will say that, you know what? Here are three things. If you get to do something that you love to do, and if you're good at it, and three, if society will benefit by you doing that, then you've got a great career ahead of you. I'll repeat that. One is that you like doing it. Two is that you're good at doing it. And three is that society will pay you to do it. And that's a great career that you actually have. It doesn't happen to everybody. Um, I would like to tell you that you could become successful because you're good at doing a certain type of music. And uh, maybe society will also pay you for doing that kind of music. But if you do not like what you're doing, then it's not the best of solutions. You have to like what you're doing. It's <laughs> uh, for me, it's very important, and I can say that because uh, music is not my primary source of income. I'm quite sure that if it was my only source of income, I might have actually written stuff that I may have not liked as much. Yeah, I don't know, but uh, I shall not act. Holier than thou. I have not had to have faced that situation. So I write what I like. I, I think I'm good at it. And every now and then I will meet somebody who will say that it's very important that you wrote that particular song. So I'm a happy man. Soul Surfer asks, when do you know a song is ready? Because it's never perfect. You can go on improving when to stop and how to stop overthinking. Brother, <laughs> that is a tough question. Um, you know, and I think uh, I tend to stop songs once I play them out there in public. The moment you've done and presented it to somebody, it somehow kind of feels complete. But if you keep it with you and you never put it out there, you will never get enough feedback. And what I do regularly is that I have so many friends that, and I just go and experiment on them, poor people. I will write a new song and then I'll just go and sing. And while I'm singing it to them, I'm watching them. I'm watching them and sensing where they're feeling the song, the parts where they're not connecting with the song. So I'm observing that entire thing. And that's how I polish my songs. It is actually on my friends. <laughs> you should play your songs to people and uh, you should watch what works. Sometimes you can even ask them which part works. You don't have to ask them which part does not work. The parts that do not work will reveal by themselves. But when somebody tells you that this works, then you can take that particular part and work further on that. You can tap into that emotion, so to speak. Let me go back to, um, there are lots of questions here, so I can actually come back to questions. But let me give you some more important uh, tips to write. Okay, uh, here's one important thing when you are in a, working with somebody. Maybe you, you write tunes on the next guy. Here are a couple of very important points. And I've observed this. Uh, oh, no. Your connection is unstable. Oh, then I think my connection has come back. All right. When you're in a band sometimes, the most important thing uh, that you need to do is to make sure that the communication is strong and that it serves the purpose of making music. Um, so here are two words which make you understand how powerful these are. Once John Lennon actually went for a, an art exhibition. It was done by Yoko, who then became his wife after that. But so he got into this thing. There was this particular place where there was a ladder, if I remember correctly. And he, you have to basically stand and walk up on that ladder. And it goes up into a very shaky uh, attic space. And you were basically still standing on the ladder and shaking. And what you see is that there is a, a telescope there. So this guy gets up, gets there. His head is inside the attic. There's a telescope there. And he looks through the telescope. And what he sees on the other side is a sign which says yes. And 
that blew his mind. The, the story blows my mind. I don't know if it's true or not, but the very fact that the word yes, yes can create magic. So when somebody is trying something and you say yes, you know, they, they do more. And conversely, think about it, the word no can kill creativity because somebody is coming with an idea and proposing something and you say, no, 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 not that. The moment you say no, most people take that no as a rejection of themselves, not just the idea. And so one thing that I find to be, uh, here's another great story to tell you the, the power of no. There is a British theater group uh, which does impromptu plays. There must be 10, 15 of them on stage. They get on the stage and they just ask the audience, why don't you throw me an idea? We will, we will start a play. And they just take that idea. One guy says something, the next guy responds to that. They respond and they just make a play on the stage. It is sometimes supposedly incredible to watch. Somebody went and asked them, how do you do this? And they said, we have one simple rule. And that the rule is that you do not say no to any idea. I'm going to repeat that. You do not say no to any idea. So if somebody says that, oh, and so the next guy should not say that, oh, he's dead. No, you can't do that. The story will be over. No, he will probably go on to say that, yes. But what the Batman did not know was that Batman had Kevlar around his head and he takes it from there. So do not introduce the idea. If you say no in the middle of a creative process, you will stymie, you will, you will block the flow of energy. It is very important to keep, you know, uh, an atmosphere where everybody can contribute. And the best thing you can do to people is to avoid saying no. Like when I play with my band, for example, <laughs> They laugh because I'll make a song and I'll have, let's say, a certain portion where, you know, there are chords for a, a solo section. I'll turn to Naveen. Naveen Thomas is my guitarist, a brilliant guitarist. And I'll turn to Naveen and I'll say, hey, Naveen, play something brilliant. <laughs> Just the frame, you know, the, the feeling. He plays brilliant stuff otherwise also, but I'm quite sure that he enjoys the process because hey, Naveen play something brilliant. And sometimes he will play something. And if, if, if it does not match what I want, I will not say that I don't like it. I make sure that I will say, ha ah, ah, okay, can you try something else also? Now, when you tell that, you're acknowledging the fact that here is another human being who has just multiple things are just flowing. You don't have to block yourself. So to ask somebody when they produce you something that it's not really matching you, you ask them another, give me another option. Let's try this or let's keep that aside. Let's try this. And... Uh, one very important thing is to experiment. You have to create a, a, an atmosphere where you, because, you know, people like experimenting. And you are not saying no way. You're not shooting down the ideas. You can shoot. You can ask for a different idea. Do not shoot the messenger. Yeah. If you don't like the message, ask him to deliver another message for you. But do not shoot the messenger. Create a nice atmosphere where people can uh, contribute. Here's a lovely story that I heard from uh, Queen. Uh, now, all four of them wrote music and they were fantastic at it. And they had one particular rule which they arrived at, I think, uh, which I think is brilliant to use. And so they would write a song and let's say one person wrote the song, he would invite everybody else to contribute their ideas to the song and they would go on it. And at every point in every band, in every song, sometimes you'll reach a point where you'll say, ah, I could either go this way or go that way. And in that time, you can actually argue till death without really coming to a conclusion. And so their rule was that whoever wrote the song, whoever brought it first, gets to decide which direction is going to go. And everybody else has to agree with that. And if everybody else wanted a different thing, you write your song and then we will do what you want to do. But the, the choice of actually making the song and where it would go was decided by the person who wrote the song. So I long ago came up with this idea that it is better to have a benevolent dictatorship than an uh, inefficient democracy. <laughs> All right, let me get to some questions, guys. Um, Navareng asks, is it important to rhyme the last words of the lyrics? Not really, no. Um, like I said, the most important thing is to write to express, not to impress. So just, just pour your heart out, man. If you're feeling it, 
Sometimes it's just the tonality of what you're doing that will move another person. Benson Chakra. Hi, Benson. Um, could you please complete artist? Oh, the quote. I'm assuming that Benson is talking about the quote that you said. So creativity is about allowing yourselves to make mistakes. Art is knowing which ones to keep. <laughs> All right. Uh, so Hamas, does reading help in order to become a good songwriter? Yes, it does. But feeling helps even more. You see, sometimes what you need to know is that um, communication is the result that you achieve. You could know the entire dictionary in and out, but when you talk, you may not make the other person do what you want them to do, and that means your communication is bad. Whereas some people are very minimal. They don't really talk too much. But when they get something done, when they say something, it gets done. So they have learned what communication really is, and communication is to convey. It's the result you achieve. Uh, so... Um, Coming to what I was saying, what was that? So writing, um, you do not have to read to write. Uh, it's good to read, but do not make it a precondition. Uh, all of you know the emotions that you really want to deal with. You do not have to search deeper than that. I think one of the most important things that I've heard as an artist is that as an artist, you have to feel, you have to allow yourself to feel because all your music, everything comes from that point onwards. Make your art a subset of what you're feeling. Do not make your song a subset of your knowledge because sometimes your knowledge is limited, especially when your knowledge is limited. But make your art and what you produce a subset of what you feel. And then the required techniques will come because you will, you've already decided that this is what you feel and you're looking for the things that will help you feel those things. How can I give you an example? Yeah. How do I put chords for my song? Yeah. It's just a, a, a simple thought. Technically, if I go about it, I don't even know most of the chord names that I'm playing. But one thing that I learned was that a chord is three or more notes together. Right? A chord is three or more notes together. Minimum three. And so if I've sung a melody, if I look at a... a, a uh, a lyric and I sing some melody and I'm trying to find chords. There are hundreds of chords that you can pick. One rule that I've generally followed is that if I want this melody to be held inside this chord, if the chord should hold this melody, then that note should be necessarily in that chord. Correct? So that's one note. And then if it's a guitar, for example, or a piano, I can hold the five strings and just place my fingers and say, Okay, that's one note sorted out. This note also sounds fine good with this. That note also sounds good with this. And that's my chord. I'm not coming from knowledge. I'm just listening and, you know, as I'm singing that melody, I'm wondering, oh, does, this, does, this, does this hold this particular melody? And uh, if it does, it's a good chord. And you're just finding it on the fly. You don't have to actually come from a place of knowledge. You're coming from a place of, does it sound good to you? And sometimes, uh, though this is the exception, sometimes you want to create tension, right? You are singing a particular thing and you want to create tension in that melody. And so therefore you can pick a chord which does not have that, that note and it will, it will create tension. Let me give you an example of that. Uh, I have a song called uh, Our Deeper Sphere. There's this part which goes, ha. Huh. The playing small does not serve the world, there's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. You can hear the tension there. That's because that chord does not have that note. Everything else has. The playing small does not serve the world, there's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We were all meant to shine as children do. So I, I, I hope I've given you an understanding of what I was talking about. Mm. You pick your chords, which is three or more notes. One note should have that main melody note that you're singing. Two more notes, you find it, tinker. You don't have to 
always come from uh, a, a place of knowledge. You do not actually have to learn the entire dictionary before you have to before you have conversations with other people, and you do not need to know all the music theory before you start writing a song. In fact, one of the things that I, I remember telling my son recently was, I said, if you can hold a decent conversation, you can write a song, because you should view songwriting and songs as conversations that you're having with people. You are basically trying to tell them something. You're te either telling them what you're feeling, or maybe you're telling yourself what you're feeling, maybe you're making sense of something in life, whatever it is, but it is a conversation. It is as simple as that. And most of the people that I know can hold fascinating conversations. You put them on stage and tell them to do that, they get bothered about it. So do not, do not get bothered about it. Relax. When you're relaxed, you will do the best at anything that you're doing. So learn to relax, and it's a great thing to apply while doing this thing. Uh, so many songs get written post breakups. Do you think it's ethical to breach the privacy between two people? Is it okay to write up just about anything? Uh, sometimes <laughs> the system just works in a certain way. And if, uh, you know what, there is a saying that, uh, you should fall in love with an artist because otherwise, how will you be ever immortalized in a song or in a painting or in a sculpture or whatever it is? So, yeah, some people will, you know, if 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 you are going to meet an artist, I think it it comes with the territory that you know you will get immortalized in a song. It might not be a good thing; it might be a bad thing sometimes. It might be a lovely thing some other times, and uh, you take it as it goes, man. Naba Rang says, "Sir, how to pick the right melody?" matches with the lyrics? That is an important question. It is a technical question and hence there is no single way to really answer that. However, uh, scales, ragas are all emotions. So I'm going to give you an overly simplistic answer to this. I know because I don't have too much time to do this. Maybe we can chat some other day or whatever it is. But the overly simplistic answer is that you are, let us say, okay, I'm going to just pick up one of the, some, some, some lyric that I'm saying. Yeah. I have a song called Kairos on Wings. And it, the first line, it's about independent music. And it says, it is one's choice to seek one's voice, to wait in the sidelines or soar in the skies. Now, if you look at that lyrics and try and understand what it feels you, you it's not a sad thing it is it it has a certain energy about like i said every word has an energy inside it tap into that energy so you stare long at it enough it will start singing to you <laughs> if it doesn't please don't ask for a refund but let me just give you an example of what happened to me when i did that so i'm looking at these lines and i'm not thinking of theory i'm just thinking of a certain feeling and i go it is one's choice to seek one's voice, to wait in the sidelines or to soar in the skies. It is one's choice. Join me, rejoice. So that's how you do it. I mean, you, you, you can look at a lyric and a melody will come out of it. And you can look at a melody and a lyric can also come out of it. Uh, I prefer writing a lyric first, but... There is no hard and fast rule. Um, both of them should be about the same thing. That's the important thing. That's what I, I meant by you cannot have a, a sad, beautiful tune and a lyric which goes, don't worry, be happy. Yeah, it, it has to match. There, there is a certain energy to a line. There's a certain energy to a song. You need to feel that song. And that's how you actually write a song which conveys those feelings. And when somebody else listens to you having those feelings, they will also have that feelings, which is basically what you're trying to do. You know, I always feel that one of the things that I like to think that I'm doing, which is a noble thing, <laughs> is that when I sing and when I connect with people, one of the things that I am doing for them is letting them know that they're not alone. We're all together in this thing. Sometimes all you need to know is that you're not alone. Right? All right, let's go. Uh, Benson Chasko asks, there are also songs that are written by other lyricists or other songwriters, but it is sung by another singer. How do we fall into that writer's emotion? 
Well, like I said, Benson, you you you're not really trying to fall into their emotion. You know the context of the song, and we are interested in your perspective on that emotion. That's it. It's like families sometimes. I mean, it, it's very weird. Uh, what is love in one family is not love in another family. Like in in one family, when a father comes and just pats his son like that on the back, it's a declaration of huge love. In another family, unless it's a huge hug, you know, people are upset. So different people are different things and embrace that. Embrace that side of yourself. Just feel what you're feeling. I'm going to give you an example that I love giving people, which is Mark Knopfler. Now, he is a guy who's so chilled out that even when he sings a sad song, he does not sound stressed. But you do know that he's feeling that. And so he will... <laughs> the, 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 the song that I like talking about is there's, there's a song where he calls baloney again. Baloney again means it's absolute bullshit. I mean, <laughs> it's a phrase which says baloney again means you're just saying nonsense. That's that song where he says baloney again, baloney again. <laughs> and... That's how Mark Knopfler is. That's him. And he's being true to himself. Mark, uh, do not try and impress somebody. Just, just express. Just express. Just do it. Like I said, you cannot take something. You will make other people feel it too. And let me come back to another important thing in songwriting. Um, yeah. So, if, you know, they want to cheat tentative while you're creative. You have a good idea, but you feel... Yeah, how can I just say this? And so you say, you just try this. And you say it very cool. However, enthusiasm with which you present an idea. But if you have a bad, let's, let's try this, you know, this would be like a good idea. So you at least you need to take your idea, your full attendance. So when you present something, present it. You need to stand in front of four fully grown, you know, leather and another book. And uh, it takes a lot of uh, courage to open up to your emotions and uh, and here are some important things about flow it's about a state of things that create a situation of flow one when you face tasks that you have a chance of completing you can feel flow two you must be able to concentrate and three you are able to concentrate because the task is clear grows and provides immediate feedback a big thing break it down to small things it is finally small things stuck together, but the small things have to be done well also. And so if you overall yourself, sometimes you're just not going to be able to produce anything that is of any class. So you break down big things into small things. Maybe you're just going to write one line for a song. Maybe you're just going to polish one line for a song. Maybe you just have, uh, you know, uh, you say that every day I'm going to write half a verse. And you start with something. Simple and from that simplicity, you can actually go along. You, oh, I hope you guys are seeing me. I'm talking like crazy over here. Are you guys seeing me? All right, um, it is 6 45. Oh, he's back. Oh. It's not some use the artist internet. Good Lord, don't tell me that I, I was talking all this while without you guys seeing most of the stuff that I said. I feel like a monumental idiot. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know. We just had massive rains over here. It was like crazy rains. I don't know if something happened to the internet during that time. Uh, uh, am I back? Who's going to say? For five minutes? Yes. What do you want me to do for five minutes? I just got a... It's a song... A song, please. Yes, let me do that. And uh, I like playing the song because uh, to determine uh, where the song goes. Uh, so this is a song about living in the here and the now. And uh, it is a song about the Buddha. It's about uh, the fact that he always lived in the present moment. And the song is called Tadagata. I hope you guys enjoy this one. Every now and then, some man walked this world and lived forever. 
Knowing what we don't seem to understand I'm afraid they have been To be just to lay off Or in the ordinary They see it shouldn't say A girl I feel who lives in the now No, no other time Thank you, sir, so much for the session. It has been a very short session, but it's been great having you guys. I apologize for the time when my internet or your internet went. But remember, guys, this is about actually finding yourself, and it's about expressing yourself. God bless you. I hope you write songs that will make people, make people feel that, wow, life is worth living, because life is worth living. Thank you. I'll be logging out now. <laughs>